my most important tool is this guy. Picker Petey. How tall are you, Petey? You're about what? Ten inches? It's about ten inches. But he's got a nose that smells gold. Right, bud? Dirt. Welcome to this California Gold Rush. Today we're going to talk about prospecting equipment and what you need and where. A lot goes into it. You need to ask yourself, for one, what kind of gold am I going to be looking for? Are you going to be looking for hard rock gold? Are you going to be looking for plastic gold? And what's your access like? Are you going to be able to get right to the river or are you going to have to hike down and hike back up? So that plays a big part in what you're going to bring with you. You gotta figure out what you're gonna try to do, whether it's gonna be sniping, bedrock, digging a hole, if you're gonna sluice, if you're gonna pan, um, if you're gonna be on bedrock, you know, a lot of things are gonna go into it. So what you bring down with you versus how much gold you think you're gonna get plays a part. You don't wanna be bringing a ton of weight down with you and then having to bring all that weight out if you didn't really need the equipment. So you gotta first kinda know your area. If you're prospecting, you wanna go light. Okay. So, I don't have everything that I normally have with me right now. Because I'm currently in between states. Some stuff I left in storage. So I don't have everything. But I'm going to go over you what I normally bring with me and some other things that you can use when you're out prospecting or mining. We'll start off with the backpacks. Now, like I said, depending on your area, if you're going to have to hike in, and you're not quite sure what you're going to be doing for the day and you're going to go down and test you're pretty much better off taking a backpack a smaller backpack and a gold pan and a few other choice items you know but you want to start off with a nice light pack if you're going to stay overnight you want to go to something like this a little bit bigger where you can bring you know camping equipment survival gear food and your prospecting gear but you want to start out with a, a late backpack and uh, this one here is a molly bag you can get these at the army navy store stuff like that they're really durable uh, this one lasted a long time I would put you know a bucket inside it and uh, carry out ore and fill buckets of dirt and carry them out all types of stuff and it's lasted a long time still gonna keep that for my scout backpack I got a nice big backpack here now which you can pretty much put everything I need all in one pack. Now pans, I prefer the Garrett Super Sluice. This is Petey's pan. I prefer the Garrett Super Sluice. Uh, it's, it's a really wide bottom pan which I like. It's very thick and durable. You could drop it and uh, it's not going to be cracked. Uh, I do like the bigger, I think these are 15, this is 17. That's a pearl mine pan. Those are good pans as well. The gold claw pans are really good. I like this little pocket pan for doing, uh, you know, small bedrock cracks and smaller cleanups once it's down to mostly fines. Tweezers. If you're gonna work bedrock cracks, sniping, stuff like that, you're gonna need yourself a pair of tweezers. Now, classifiers. I don't really classify anymore. Um, Sorry if I sound like I'm cold, because I'm absolutely freezing. But I don't use classifiers much anymore. But when I do, it'd be for a cleanup. You're gonna need yourself a snuff a bottle. That's how you're gonna get your gold out of your pan. I like to keep these plastic snapple bottles for black sand. It's uh, easy to carry out. They're strong, they're not gonna break. Scale, weighing your gold. Definitely a good thing to have. These are great for working bedrock. If you go to Home Depot or Lowe's or your local hardware store, you should be able to find one. It's actually a gutter scoop. They make different size ones. So you get this here, then you get that side. Great for getting in cracks. Prospector scoop. Should always have one. Metal detecting, working bedrock. <coughs> I don't have my two toes tool or my uh, gold miners trading post rebar scoop. 
I'm actually picking those up on the uh, next gold rush out west, which is about to set off, so which is good. But nice big screwdriver is good to have. Hand pickaxe, hammer of some sort, uh, crowbar with strong magnets. You can stick it on that way. You can rub it over, see if there's black sand in the ground. Good thing to have. Nice wire brush, scratching out your cracks. Thing with me, I actually need to get a wetsuit, but you're gonna need yourself goggles, some kind of uh, apparatus to suck things up. You can use a plastic bottle, you can use one of those, you could use all types of things. You're gonna need tweezers. You know, you can get into it and get a hookah, get an air system, stuff like that. Great way to get gold. And of course, a metal detector. Great tool, something I don't use enough, and I need to start using it more. Um, I just have a regular gold bug. It works well. I've definitely uh, found stuff with it. Not necessarily any nuggets yet, but I've found stuff with it. Now, this is actually a new addition. You may have seen me use one of these in my older videos from the first California Gold Rush season with Jerry. Um, I was absolutely blown away. This is a great tool. You get yourself down to bedrock. And you're having a hard time getting everything off the bottom. You want to get every little speck. Work yourself down to the bedrock and then take this and uh, suck up the rest. All right, so as far as digging goes, it's good to have a pickaxe, full-size pickaxe, a small shovel, regular shovel. This here is a shovel I actually made. It's a solid steel shaft, very good shovel. Uh, you can pry with it, dig with it, everything. If you don't want to bring down a regular shovel and something like this. Which I call Justin Case. He's only five foot tall and 30 pounds, but this guy could move some rocks. I can tell you that. Right, so now sluice boxes. Like I said, I don't have all the sluice boxes that I have with me. But these two are my go-tos. This here is an armor weave aluminum. So if you look at it, they're pretty much little half shells. Great, great, great system. I absolutely love this box. It's got miner's moss and carpet underneath it, which I absolutely love. I think it works perfectly fine. And uh, it's a great box. This here is an easy sluice, but the head, the uh, I forgot it in California when I went out and hung out with Jerry and JC and Top Cat and all those guys. I left it there. But guess what? I'm gonna be back there very soon. But I absolutely love this box too. Really lightweight, easy to carry. This one's actually lightweight too. It's uh, made of plastic, so it's a great, great box. The Creek Critter, uh, drop riffle sluices, all those, all those sluices are great. You pretty much catch gold with anything. But it's just all on what you want to carry down for weight like I said, and where you can get to. Now hard rock stuff, like I said, I don't have everything. I obviously can't be carrying around a big rock crusher in the van with me traveling across the country. So, something like this, I made up. I took two pieces of pipe, cut them, welded them, put a plate on the bottom. You can put your foot in here, drop your pieces that you want to crush in there. And that's where Justin Case comes in again. Stick him right in there. Bam, 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 dump it in your pan, pan it out. Then you're gonna need yourself a loop so you can check and see if you got any gold. Some of you might know what this is. Um, I'm not gonna set it up because it's, I think it's about 20 degrees right now and I'm freezing, but I'm gonna give you a quick layout of what it is. This is the gold cube. Um, a lot of you might know what this is, like I said, but this would be standing upright and you've got a down, 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 down. And there's a vortex mat inside. You pretty much you drop your material on top, right up here on the slick plate. The material goes down, drops in, catches on the, the V mat all the way down. Not V mat, uh, the very belt mat. Comes out, your tailings come at the bottom, and then you just dump these trays out and pan it out. Now, 
They have different attachments. You can get a trommel for it. This is a high banker top. So pretty much where that slip plate is. Oh, there's some extra stuff in there. Oops. But uh, where that slick plate is, this would sit on top, and you can just shovel your material directly on there. The water sprays out of here, and it goes through the system underneath here. There's a few drop riffles right there, which actually still have material in them. But uh, stuff goes over that, drops in this little slot here, and starts going down through the system. So if you're in a spot where you don't have water, that you can pump out of, you can use a tub and recirculate your water. So pretty much you could take this anywhere, stick it on a mountainside, as long as you're car carting some water down, you'd be able to process material. Or you can put the pump directly in the river and feed your material over it that way. And when you want to really get serious, you can upgrade to a dredge. Now this here is uh, an over under box, which means that it has Two different layers here of riffles. You got your screen here. This is a crash box. Your material is going to be sucked up by a, a pump through this hose. It creates a venturi. The material will come up into here. All your material comes up into here, hits this box, falls down, gets pushed out. This can either be set up on a stand in the river or you can set it up on floats. You have a nozzle at the end of this, the hose anywhere from 10, 20 feet, depending on your pump size. This is your most effective way, but it's also the heaviest and the most to bring down. So you don't want to bring something like this down until you know you're going to be getting good gold. And then winches. Now winches are something also that once you know you're getting good gold and there's a bunch of big rocks, you're gonna wanna bring something like this down. Now two come-alongs is ideal. You get two come-alongs together, one big one, one small one, and a strap, you can pretty much move anything. But in a bind, you can use one and two straps. Very simple, just tie it off to a spot, hook one end up to the rock, and crank, very easy. Hope you guys enjoyed today's short video. I just want to let you guys know what I usually bring out to the river and what you can maybe possibly bring with you to maximize your gold intake for what you're going to be able to accomplish for the day. Knowing what you're going to bring with you for what you're going to get done in the day, for how much gold you're going to get, is a very important thing. It's going to, like I said, it's all going to play into your area where you're going to be prospecting, what you're going to be doing. You got to take all these things into consideration. If you're going out prospecting, pack light, bring a small backpack bring testing equipment. You find gold, you bring your stuff back. Work your way up. You can get yourself a gold sniffing dock because they really make a difference. That's it for this California Gold Rush. I'll see you very soon. We're going to be, we could be going right up that road right now for all you know. But there's going to be some new content coming soon. Petey's excited, I'm excited, and I know i got plans to meet a couple people already, and it's going to be good. If you want to check out Flash in Japan, I think uh, maybe next week sometime, it should be an update on an upcoming show. We're going to do a live feed with the LBPA boys live. All right. I'll see you on the next one. Gold day to you.